Hello everyone, my name is Pixel Riffs, and welcome back to the Minecraft Survival Guide. I hope you guys are having a good day. Today we're back here in the trading hall, although this week we are going to be spending a bit more time with pillagers than we do with villagers. I think this week is going to be loosely themed around raids, so I'm looking forward to spending a bit more time messing with pillager mechanics, and eventually the goal is to make something resembling a raid farm, something that we can use to more automatically or more in a more controlled environment get pillager and raid mob drops and i'm looking forward to messing around with that a little bit later in the week but for today what i want to do is something that i promised i would do a little while ago when we set up the end village and i'm going to head out to the end and we're going to try a raid out there but first of all i want to let you guys know that i have seen the comments people have left about some issues with villagers forgetting which workstations are theirs especially if they have another workstation in their line of sight and so these booths over here have not been filled up with any more villagers yet because from what i can tell as you're seeing every now and again when the villagers decide to work they are all working with the workstation in front of them and i've been hanging around this for a while i've logged in i've logged back out i've tried a few different things to unload and reload this area and it seems like each of these villagers recognizes only the workstation in front of them as their own and i think the staggered design we have going on here plus the fences i've put up as dividers may be helping the fact that they cannot see any other workstations in their direct line of sight as soon as this villager tries to look over a little bit he's not going to see this workstation because the fence is blocking it and so while obviously this doesn't allow them to share gossip and share kind of discount info between them i would kind of recommend building something like this when you build a villager trading hall so that the villagers are more able to understand that the workstation in front of them is the only one that they need to access and as far as i can tell that's working famously for me right now i don't think any of these villagers has ever locked up their trades and not immediately unlocked them and right now as you can see they're actually working quite frequently and every time they do that they unlock their trades so I'm going to be able to take full advantage of this while I uh, while I can before the next update comes in and fixes the bug that's currently happening where they basically refresh their trades every time they look down at their workstation. And I think on this opposite side here, what we might do is bring in, say, cartographers or some other kind of villager profession, which is not going to be targeted by the librarians sat over here. If we had more lecterns opposite, then there is a chance this guy might be able to see the lectern that's over here. But if we put down a cartography table or a fletching table or something like that up here, we can mix up the professions a little bit, but it will mean that these librarians don't decide to target those workstations as their workstations. That is my hope at least and right now i think that's probably going to be the best course of action but for now i'm going to put all of this stuff away i've got bits and pieces of stuff in my inventory we are going to return to the village that i built in the end so many episodes ago and we are going to see if we can challenge ourselves to defeat a raid while we are out there with those villagers so here we are back in the stronghold and yes this is the stronghold and not the end my end portal is in there and i've just slept in this bed to set my spawn point because i feel like it might be worthwhile having a means to easily get back to the end just on the off chance that i end up dying during this raid because i haven't really made that many preparations for the raid i'm not planning on building a giant wall around the outside here or a giant fence even though those are probably the most effective ways of defending a village from a raid i feel like what i'm gonna do is spend a little bit more time on the ground battling these pillagers one-on-one -on -one and maybe spend a little bit of time on the cliffs that we have built oh oh yeah this this is the one for the uh, the enderman farm not the the end village it's uh, actually over here there we go yeah i haven't really built much in the way of fortifications i might spend a little bit of time up on these cliffs firing down on some of the pillagers if i can and maybe up at the top of these houses as well but i haven't really done a whole lot to defend this village from raiders we have a few iron golems knocking around which is always going to be of benefit if the raiders get into the city here but i think what i'm going to do to protect the villagers is a fairly minimal approach which is just going to be to wall them off and this guy has already given me a an opportunity to do that so i'm going to block him in like that to make sure that he cannot be attacked by raiders from the side now of course there are exceptions to this vexes should be able to fly through blocks and if they notice a villager while they are doing that they should be able to fly through and attack the villager but i don't think they will be able to target something if they cannot see it if it's not in their line of sight to begin with so as long as vexes do not travel through those very specific blocks and notice that the villagers are hiding in there we should be okay now this guy here we are probably going to have to we're going to have to be very careful not to right click on any of the beds because beds will still 
explode while we're in the end here, but I think we should be able to wall him off if we build some stuff. Oh, and he's going to have to walk back to his workstation for that to happen. There we go. I've taken the bed away temporarily just so the villager doesn't accidentally pathfind to it, get in bed, and then escape this box because what we ideally want is for the villagers to remain trapped in here until we can uh, finish the raid and then we'll be able to let them all out again. I tell you what guys, it is actually really difficult to place blocks around here and not accidentally click on one of these beds, but I think we're managing it so far and hopefully we should be able to... Okay, these guys are just in a in a pit over here. They're, they're just kind of hanging out in the water over here. So maybe we can cordon those off like so. And yeah, we should be able to box them in nice and easily. The cool thing here is we don't have to worry too much about lighting up these villager cells because zombies and stuff aren't going to spawn in here. But uh, yeah, the raid should be able to spawn within render distance of this village, which is is going to be quite a sizable span of terrain. They might even spawn out over here, and it's going to be really quite surreal seeing some of these pillagers spawning out here in the uh, the outer reaches of the end island. Over here, we have a few satellite villagers who are taking up residences in and around the house that I built for them, and we've got a few of these end-style houses around here, but I don't see them taking any professions. I think they are too far away from the lecterns that we have over there, so we should probably just block these guys in as they are. And there are a few of them that are just kind of collecting, doing their villager thing, and just kind of talking to each other. Hopefully we should be able to box in some of these. They might even end up acting as focal points for the raiders, but hopefully they will be safe in there from any attacks. And there are a couple of guys in these houses already. There is one guy just, yep, there's two of them actually standing in there. Let me just check that I didn't build a back entrance to this place. I know a couple of them have these little fenced off areas at the back. Uh, yeah, okay, I probably need to block this up as well. It's got a fence gate there that they wouldn't be able to make their way out of, but I imagine pillagers might find their way in if they could. And I think that's everyone accounted for. I will block up this door as well just to make sure, and I may as well block up this back entrance here as well. And with that, I'm quickly going to head up into the air to see if I can look down and spot any more villagers, but no, it looks like it is just the golems. I think this place is just about raid ready. Now I need to head back to the overworld and make a few preparations of my own. I need to go and get the bad omen effect, of course, but I will need to grab some more arrows if I want to use these crossbows at all as well. And who knows, we could even end up using beds as defense against the pillagers if we wanted to blow some of them up, although that might be a little bit volatile, we'll see. But I think it's time to finally make good on my promise to try a raid in the end dimension. So I'm going to head back to the overworld, I'm going to get bad omen, make some more preparations, and then we're going to do this thing. So I have stocked up on a few things. I've got a little bit of extra food, although the golden carrots have been keeping me going splendidly for the last little while. And I have two stacks of arrows on me so that we can use those with the crossbows and not have to worry too much about them running out. But I am returning, if I can find it, to the site of our previous raids and the place that I usually go if I want to get the bad omen effect. And that is the pillager watchtower that is near this village here in the desert. And there it is, coming into view on the distant horizon let's see if we can spot any captains right away and oh thank goodness for java spawning mechanics the last raid i did was in bedrock edition and i was not sure if the pillagers were ever going to respawn in this area but no it looks like we have a pillager captain right there let's stand on top of the desert temple over here and see if i can snipe him from a distance a couple of his compatriots have noticed me but i think we should be able to get this guy taken care of and we could even try getting a second level bad omen effect by taking out the captain over here as well because i've never done a raid past bad omen level one if, as far as i can recall at least and oh it looks like that might, that guy might have despawned after all let's see if we can grab another guy or maybe pass the banner onto one of his friends and then maybe they will become a captain and we can just get the uh the bad omen effect oh no i don't want to give you the golden carrot i want to give you the banner looks like he is not picking up the banner so maybe only a few pillagers can actually become captains i was not aware that there was a limitation on that but hey we've got bad omen one to start off with let's cruise around and see if we can spawn another captain in I thought if there was a banner on the ground, they would walk over to it and basically reassign the captain role, but it seems like they haven't done that automatically. So I don't know, maybe there's some kind of tag that these pillagers have that allows them to either become a captain or not. There he is. There's our guy. Let's take care of him. If I can actually aim a shot right, there we go. We got two bad omen levels now. Yep, there we go. Bad omen two. I think there was another guy with a banner down there, so maybe we could shoot for a third. There we go. I think that is Bad Omen 3. And I don't want to push my luck any further than that. So let's 
fly home trying to avoid villages as best we can and let's go and <laughs> restock some fireworks for a start and then make our way back out to the end we'll trigger a raid out there and we are doing bad omen 3 out in the end so for those of you who are not aware, additional levels of Bad Omen actually add another wave to the end of a raid, and it's usually just a repeat of the hardest wave of the raid, the last wave that happens, so we can expect to fight a few different waves where we have evokers riding ravages and stuff like that. My world is set to hard difficulty, so I imagine we will be tackling some of the strongest raiders that we possibly can, and of course we have to make sure that we can get to the stronghold, which is down here on the opposite side of this nether fortress. Okay. Okay, I'm a little bit nervous about how this is going to go, but fingers crossed this should be a relatively straightforward experience. Here we are, making our way through to the end. All we should need to do is hit one of these portals over here. I'm going to say it is that one over there that we need to go through. Let's walk up into this, and yep, the village is just over there. So as soon as I get into the radius of the village with workstations, beds, and villagers around, we should trigger a raid. I've got a fair amount of supplies here. I've got plenty of fireworks. I've got the arrows, crossbows, all this kind of stuff. We could probably put away some of the more valuable tools. I might switch to my chest plate once I'm over there as long as the elytra is not going to give me too much of an advantage, but it might be worthwhile to fly around versus having the protection. I'm not certain yet. I guess we will find out on the fly, but for now, let's get into the raid and let's do this. Okay, that is super weird seeing the raid bar filling up here in the end, but the raid is happening, folks, so we may as well get into it. Let's position ourselves up on top of this terrain and see where the first wave of raiders is going to come from. This first wave should be nice and straightforward. Oh, look at that. They have spawned right near to the outskirts of the village, and I should be able to snipe them from up here if I possibly can. I guess these guys aren't too dangerous, so I could probably hop down and take care of a couple of them with my sword. These guys aren't really tracking towards the villagers, which is good news because the only real fail conditions for a raid is if the villagers end up getting killed. And right now it seems like these pillagers might not be able to do that. Ah, one of them is hiding in the sugarcane like a ninja. There we go. Let's take care of him. And we traded shots there, but looks like I haven't taken all that much damage. I'm probably looking like a bit of a pincushion with the arrows, but I do not seem to have taken all that much damage yet, which is good. There is one guy left, and maybe he's in the middle of the village here tussling with some of the iron golems. Yep, I hear him. Okay, let's take care of you. There we go. Wave one down. Let's head up to our little perch up here on top of the cliffs, which I'm very happy that I've built now, actually, because these are a nice vantage point from which we can see the raiders coming, as opposed to everything else just being completely flat and open. Here we go. Wave number two, where are you? I did not hear the horn at that point, so I'm not entirely certain where the raiders have ended up. Ah, looks like they are down here. Okay, well, there's a vindicator down there, so I'm going to keep him at arm's length if I can, try and fire off a couple of bow shots. He's running around quite a lot though. I think they are probably trying to get to those farmers which I have stashed on the opposite side of the cliff here. Well that's fine. I really don't mind taking shots at these guys from above and if the Vindicator sees me hopefully he should make himself a slightly easier target. Yes there we go. Okay come down here buddy. That's right. That's right. Track on me and I'll see if I can snipe you from above. Man, these guys these guys have been quite evasive today. I'll take the emeralds, though. Definitely take the emeralds. One more pillager left somewhere around here. I'm going to have to fly up into the air again to see where he has got to. But I don't hear the sounds of villagers dying quite yet. So that's a very good sign. Yep, there's another Vindicator down here. Another one of our axe murdery friends. There we go. Got him in one. All right, let's head back up to the cliff and let's begin wave number three. I tell you what, guys, this is so surreal seeing pillagers in the end and a raid happening here because let's face it, these mobs really aren't supposed to spawn in the end. But I think if you have a village anywhere, you can have a raid there. Seems to be the rules. So we could even do a raid in the nether later in the week. Let me know in the comments if you'd like that idea because I really like the idea of just having raids in unusual places. And once this ravager is taken down, there we go. We can begin wave four. Let's try and lure them closer to the center of the village so that we can get a few more iron golems involved with this because watching iron golems fight ravagers is always super fun. Oh, this time they've spawned on the roof of one of my houses. That's pretty cool, actually. And they should all be making their way down from top of there but hopefully that will mean they take a little bit of damage now these guys are probably going to be fighting me up close and personal so i will take my sword to them of course and maybe this might be the time when i need to apply my diamond armor especially if we're up here on top of the cliff in a slightly more defensible position the witches are still 
hanging out over there. Let's see if we can take a couple of those out at range before they get me with some potions, which is are going to be healing their allies in these fights, of course. So we do need to make sure we take them out nice and easy. We got the Vindicator over there. Another one just walked off the roof. I think I saw one more witch down here, or maybe there is a witch has just uh, healed this pillager. Oh, he has a multi-shot crossbow. Oh, ouch. Okay. The Vindicator is dealing a little bit of damage, but nothing I can't handle right now. And we just have one more Vindicator left. There he is over there trying to find his way to the banner that's going to make him the captain. There we go. And he's out of there. Fantastic. Way four down. Let's move on to way five. It's kind of interesting to me where they choose to spawn because we're going to be manipulating those mechanics later in the week with a raid farm. And oh, there we go. We've got a pillager riding a ravager. He's going to make his way down into the village. The iron golems are already pacing around hoping to take him out. Let's see if he ends up coming down off that cliff or not. I'll try and take out a few of these guys from range if I can. It's nice and easy with the bow as long as you get a couple of hits in, which personally I'm having a bit of trouble with right now, it seems like. But the iron golems are doing their job. That's right, defend the village. Awesome stuff. I tell you what, the one guy I am going to have to be a little bit worried about is the evoker over there, but we should hopefully be able to swoop in and deal with him once some of his defenders are taken care of. We'll get the pillagers and villagers indicators out of the way first. It seems like the iron golems over here are already doing their job, which is great news. Let's take this guy out from behind. Let's see if we can take out that evoker as well. Oh, the vexes have already come out. Hopefully the golems will be able to deal with them. And let's use our shield to stun this ravager. Oh, he's breaking the leaves. He's breaking the leaves in my carefully placed trees. <laughs> what an idiot. All right. Uh, looks like the golems are helping him trim those trees a little bit. Uh, let's see if we have an evoker around here because maybe the uh, golems will be able to take care of them, but I'm spotting vexes in the distance and I do not like dealing with vexes so hopefully we should be able to make this quick. I think a pillager may even be inside of- yeah okay I just spotted a pillager and heard him inside the wall here. Man those multi-shot crossbows though. <laughs> the spread, the spread is real. Now let's see if we can patch up this cliff before we take care of a couple more vexes and the evoker is probably- yep he's hiding inside of there so let's get him taken care of quickly first and then let me take to the air so I can take care of these vexes because they are trouble. They hit really hard too. The fortunate thing about vexes though is that after they've been summoned they do die automatically so hopefully if I wait around for a little bit longer I shouldn't have to worry about dealing with them too much and it looks like they may even have just taken out an iron golem which is pretty tough of them. Let's see if there is anything else spawning in. Oh okay I, I think I see the golems messing with the raiders down there that is perfect. And I do hope that the Vexes haven't actually injured any of the villagers in the town because that's going to lead to them, yeah, getting a little bit messed up. I've just spotted a couple of iron ingots lying on the ground. It seems like the iron golems may be taking a bit of a beating. Let's hope that we can avoid the same fate. And I hear a couple of pillagers firing arrows at me, so looks like the crossbows are drawn. Hopefully our villagers are okay in their little boxes around here. And it looks like we've still got half of this wave to take care of. I feel like I am hearing pillagers inside the cliff again. So I might have to go back around the outside, but oh man, the Iron Golems have really, really not done well against those Vexes. Vexes are kind of the anti-Golem defense that the Pillagers have, it seems like. So yeah, just how nimble they are maybe is giving them the advantage. Let's see if we can pop in here. And oh boy, yep, that's the uh, the welcoming party of Pillagers in here. Hopefully they don't have a Ravager in here with them. Nope, it looks like we've got two Raiders left. There is probably yet one more Pillager over there in the distance. Let's take care of you. And there we go. Fantastic. Next wave. So now that we no longer have the Iron Golems to help, I'm going to have to make sure I stay on my toes and keep an eye out for where they are spawning. There we go. Fantastic. There's a huge wave coming in. Let's take care of the Evokers and the Ravagers first, if we possibly can. The problem with those Evokers is they absolutely sprint everywhere when they're on the ground. And this is where having water around would really come in handy, but I don't really have a great deal of that here in the end. I could pour some off the cliff here, of course, but uh, that wouldn't really do all that much good. Once I've taken out some more of the ground troops, I might be able to go in and take care of the Evokers. But yeah, this is going to be a little bit dicey, especially if Vexes start coming into play here. I'm taking advantage of the fact that some of these guys are queuing up below me to try and attack, uh, but I think we might have to go back down to ground level and take care of those evokers in a minute. The witches are trying to heal up some of the other pillagers as well, which is not doing any good for me. And I think a ravager might actually be stuck on the opposite side of this cliff, so maybe if I can spot him from a distance, 
we might be able to take him out. Let's see if I can hop down here real fast. Yep, there's a couple of guys down here actually, including the Evoker who is now summoning some Vexes. Not good. Let's get out of here while we can. Oh, <laughs> Fangs and the Ravager to deal with is not fun. Not a good combo for me. Definitely focusing fire on the Evoker and the Ravager first. I'm trying to ignore this guy who is firing crossbows at me. Yes, there we go. One Evoker down. That makes me feel a lot better about my chances. Oh, and of course, uh, the Endermen. <laughs> the Endermen are still here and they are messing with me a little bit too, but I can deal with these guys. They are all over the place and I've kind of got my technique down at this point. Thankfully, it looks like the villagers over here haven't had any trouble with the raiders who have been roaming around the village, so hopefully they haven't been able to be got through the walls or anything. And we just have a few in the center left to take care of. I think they're all just milling around this neighborhood over here. So let's see if we can take out you. Whoa, okay, wow, a whole heap of vexes just came flying over. Let's see if we can take to the air and deal with them because I really don't want to have to mess with them all up close and personal. Most important thing right now is to get a shot on the evokers. Yep, there we go, took out one of them. Let's see if we can dodge and get the other one. <laughs> it really seems like they are all milling around the center of the village hoping to take out some of the villagers who are there, but luckily the villagers are pretty well defended in those end stone boxes and they shouldn't have to deal with all that much. It really doesn't look like the vexes add to the raid bar at all, which is both good and bad news. <laughs> good news being I don't need to take them all out, but the bad news being they are just going to hang out unless they all die of natural causes before the next wave starts. I think it is just that Vindicator and one of the Evokers left to go, plus all of these Vexes roaming around. Hopefully they should all start dying off pretty soon. I think I can see a couple of them taking damage already, which is great news. Maybe if that Evoker stays there, I can get another shot on him. Yes, there we go. Okay, two Raiders left. We've just got this Vindicator, and I think there might be one more Evoker or one more Witch hanging around, but... This guy should hopefully be nice and easy to take out. All right, let's take on this Vindicator in single combat. Oh, <laughs> he didn't really stand a chance there, did he? Oh, well, and we've got plenty of axes hanging around. I wonder where our last Vindicator is. I wonder if he's got trapped around the back here with the fenced off area. They do seem to want to get in there. Nope, I don't see him right now. I wonder where he's got to. Making sure I can pick up a few of the Totems of Undying, of course, because they are probably the most valuable loot. Give or take a couple of extra emeralds. Where is this last raider? Where can he have got to? I'm having to rely on the subtitles a little bit to give away the position of this guy. Yep, no, there we go. He's inside the cliff once again. I probably shouldn't have made these things hollow, but it is kind of an advantage here and there to separate out the raiders and then take care of them little by little. There we go. We didn't get an emerald from that guy, unfortunately, but looks like we've got another wave of the raid to deal with, so let's head back outside. Okay, another wave coming in from over here. Let's take care of the Ravager riding evokers if we can. And the one problem we're doing this in the end is that I may have just aggroed an enderman by shooting an arrow at him. I honestly didn't mean it <laughs> and hopefully we can take out some of these evokers down here without the enderman getting too annoyed at me. There we go. Let's take out you. Let's take out the vexes that you've just summoned as well. Oh boy. Yep. Here they're coming up here. They're coming up here and so are the endermen. This could potentially be a bit of a problem. All I gotta do is keep my shield at the ready though and hopefully I shouldn't have any trouble. I might very quickly switch my elytra out for my diamond armor and then hopefully that will give me the extra bit of protection that I need. Let's take out the witches and evokers. And oh, that enderman has come to collect. Oh, dodged him off the cliff there as well. Yes, okay. Evoker is down. I think that's all the evokers, which is great news because I really don't feel like dealing with vexes. I think the enderman might even be underneath me right now. Like I'm high enough up that he can't reach me, but I'm still down low enough that he doesn't feel like teleporting to me at this moment. And that's good news. Right, let's take out these guys. They're all queuing up underneath me, which is kind of perfect. And there should only be a couple more left to deal with, including this Enderman, who has apparently decided to join the raiding party. I'm clearing up some of the loot from in here. I have a feeling that a bunch of the raiders are now stuck inside this cliff in here, and that's what I'm hearing. I'm hearing them all in there. So I'm going to weave around the back and see if I can take them a few of them out using, let's say, multi-shot. Let's do a little bit of crowd control here. This crossbow also has quick charge too, so hopefully I should be able to keep up a decent rate of fire. It's kind of fun taking on the pillagers with their own weapons. Yep, there we go. We took out that guy. Oh, the Endermen are coming coming back to attack me apparently. <laughs> I think that I think that pillager may even have just got an assist with the crossbow. Okay, time to back off so we can take care of this ravager from a distance though. And I'll need to bring my shield up to make sure I can stun him. There we go. Get in a couple of hits. And if the ravager is stunned, they do that kind of like shrug and then roar and yep yeah, there we go we took him out fantastic that was good textbook ravager takedown i don't normally fight those guys one-on-one -on -one at ground level so i'm happy that worked out now a multi-shot should take care of the two of these guys 
and <laughs> they're giving themselves a little bit of a tap on the back. There we go. Two taken out, a couple more waves to go, and there, there we go. That's it. That was actually the last wave. I can't believe that was Bad Omen 3, though, because it looked like we had a few more waves to take on. Folks, that went pretty well. I have to say that went really, really well. Obviously, I'm kind of loaded to the nines with good gear right now, but these villagers should be happy that we were able to defend them from a raid successfully. I can even put the bed back for this one, actually, so uh, let's pop that down there. Perfect. Thankfully, we didn't accidentally double-click on that. That would have been a nightmare. Oh, and a couple of these guys, because I haven't traded with them all that much, seem to have lost their professions from being locked in here. So that is an unforeseen consequence, but hopefully they should be able to reclaim those workstations now they're back out of here. And of course, the first thing they want to do is sleep. They've had a stressful night, and I think I have as well. The Ravager has trampled all the crops over here. Let's replant some of the spuds for the villagers. But having Hero of the Village now does mean that we would end up getting a few stuff a few uh, supplies and things like thrown at us by some of these happy villagers who are excited that we have cleared out the raid for them and maybe we will end up getting some stuff thrown at us when they wake up the following day. And that is another mechanic I want to take advantage of at some point, is having Hero of the Village. And we have Hero of the Village 3 right now, which means they are super happy with us. And if you had a decent population of villagers and a place to go with the Hero of the Village effect, you could potentially gather a bunch of resources for free just by standing around near these villagers and having them throw stuff at you. So I would really like to mess with that a little bit later in this week and see if we can exploit that to the fullest of our advantage. But that is going to be it for this episode of the Minecraft Survival Guide, folks. So happy we finally got to do a raid in the end, and I do hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to leave a like on this video, subscribe if you want to see more, and I'll see you guys soon. Take care. Bye for now.